Hello folks, tonight I am going after the Wizard Nebula, and it, it seems I do this object every year, but I've never gone deep on it before. I think the last one I did was 10 hours, and and I thought that turned out pretty good, but this time I'm going over 20. I'm, I'm going to double it and go for one final shot at the Wizard, and hopefully this is the one I get right and I'm done with it. And I'll, next year I'll be working on something else. That, that's the plan anyway. And right now I've, I've already captured about 10 hours of HA, 7 hours of oxygen, and I'm trying to get in 7 hours of sulfur, but it, it just seems I can't get enough clear skies again. And let's see. Uh, Unity game, 139.21. And... Um, I mean, readout is 759. That's a little bit high because there are some clouds out there. And, uh, oh, well, I didn't mean for this to come up, but here's my guiding. Let's, let's clear that and take a look at the guiding. Guiding, it looked like it was performing okay earlier. Point four four. <laughs> That's pretty good if it stays there, but it probably won't. Point four two. Wow. Yeah, I, I like that. The only problem I was having is that I had to do a manual focus. My moonlight focuser is not working correctly, and I'm thinking, oh no, it 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 goes out and then it comes back in, and then it stops at a certain point. It, it won't go, go in any further, even though there's plenty of room on the draw tube for, for it to go in. And I see the, the rollers turning, but the draw tube is not going back in after a certain point. So there could be something obstructing it. So for now, I just did a manual focus. And my manual focus isn't too shabby. 1.78, that's even better what I normally see. So I like that. So... Um, I, I can live with this for now, and I mean, I don't, I don't want to go out and investigate because clear skies are, are rare, and uh, if I can do the manual focus, I'll just keep an eye on it. If it looks like it's going to change, uh, I'll, I'll adjust it manually again. So that, that's what's going on. You know, it's one of those nights, and I will, I'll be back. Okay, I am done capturing data on the Wizard Nebula, and I apologize again for the way I sound. My cold is even worse than it was a couple days ago, so. But I finished an object, and I, I want to move forward, and I hope you can put up with uh, how my voice sounds. Sorry about that. But uh, in that, that previous uh, part of the video, you heard me talking about my, uh, my focusing problem, and uh, when I was trying to focus, I could see this... Uh, knob turning, but my draw tube wasn't going in any further. And it was really strange, and I I tried to wipe the, the draw tube down, you know, maybe there was something on it, I don't know, and it, it still wouldn't go in. It was still sticking out about a, I don't know, maybe an inch and a half or so. It wouldn't go in any further. When I tried the V2 controller, when I tried the software, it just got stuck at a certain point. So what I did manually is I just put my hand on this this knob and just turned it manually very softly forward and then very softly backward to try and get it past whatever maybe there was some kind of obstruction inside I'm not sure but it's weird because I could see this uh, knob turning and it, the draw tube wouldn't go in but when I did it by hand just a little bit the draw tube started moving again and whatever might have been uh, obstructing it was gone after that and it started working again so I lucked out. Uh, um, Ron uh, said he would uh, take a look at it for me if I wanted to send it back. Uh, and he gave me a couple of suggestions on how I might be able to, to fix it. But he, uh, but I just tried to just turn the knob before I did anything else. And, and that seemed to fix it. So uh, I got away with uh, another fix, just like I did with my, uh, my mount when that was sort of jerking back and forth. I'm getting lucky because whatever I seem to try fixes my problem and I can keep moving forward without having to send my equipment back. So I'm happy with that. <laughs> okay, let me 
start talking about my data. Okay, I just drank a cup of tea. Maybe that'll help me a little bit. So uh, let's look at my data. And this is 10 hours of HA. This is eight hours, or rather seven hours or so of oxygen. And this is around six hours or so of sulfur. And uh, I ran a, a DBE on sulfur and oxygen. And I had a, a real problem with sulfur because, let me show you what happened here. So because galaxy season is coming back, I, uh, I removed my smaller filter wheel and loaded back on my bigger filter wheel so I could have all of my filters loaded up on uh, narrowband and broadband. And when you do that, of course, I had to recapture flats. And what happened is all of the flats from HA, uh, oxygen, LRGB, I mean, all that stuff looked good, except for uh, sulfur. Look what was happening with sulfur. I get rings here, a big bright spot in the middle. And this is what, this is a, a flat frame for HA. And that's what I would have expected my sulfur to look like. Uh, I, I don't know what happened there. And uh, the problem, the even bigger problem is I didn't actually inspect my flats until a few days later. So I was already capturing lights for sulfur. And, and when, your, when your flats look like that, you know, you should have seen how bad the master looked. It, it will totally screw up your lights or they're not usable. So I'm in a bind, I'm like, crap, I just captured over six hours of sulfur and I don't have flats. And uh, I didn't want to have to uh, recapture uh, all this data. So what I did is uh, I used my uh, uh, HA, no, I used my old sulfur flats and just see, trying to see if those would help. I, I, I had the camera rotated as close I, as I could in the same position, but there were still some blemishes I had to clean up by hand in the sulfur data. And uh, I, I still haven't figured out what was going on with this. And uh, the only way uh, I'm really going to figure it out, because I actually tried to recapture plants again for sulfur the next day, and it still came out like this. So the only way I'm going to figure this out, I'm going to have to take off the imaging train again and you know, look at what's going on in the, the filter wheel. Maybe it's not threaded on right. Maybe there's a light leak somewhere. I'm not sure, but I didn't want to do that yet because everything else looks good. And when you take off your camera uh, in the middle of objects, when you put it back on, now you're going to have two sets of flats for the same target, stack one set of data, stack the other set, then combine them all. And it, it just becomes a more difficult process. So I'm going to try and get everything done with my other data first, then I'm probably going to take off the filter wheel and see if I can inspect what's going on with the sulfur data. But I think I got away with it for now. I, it's my sulfur is not great with using uh, the old plants, but I, I think I got away with it. It's very strange. Uh, I, I don't know what happened. So uh, I'm, I'm sure I'll see something obvious when I remove the filter wheel. Okay, so I used that SHO AIP script, and I did a few different combines. Uh, with this combine, uh, all I did was put HA in red. No, I'm sorry, I put the sulfur in red, 100%, 100% HA in green, and 100% oxygen in blue. And uh, this is what it, it looked like. And I tried another combine. And I think I uh, this one has the oxygen intensified, and uh, I, I I'm not sure I really liked that one. You know, I was just ex experimenting, making one thing brighter versus the other. And let's see here. And then I uh, I tried another one where this is another combined where. I tried mixing the channels. I, I think I tried a, a 60 percent uh, H or 60 percent sulfur in red, 40 percent HA in red, and about maybe 
a 60-40 HA in green and 40% oxygen in green and 100% oxygen in blue. I, I see lots of people mixing percentages sort of along those lines. And it, it, it works really well when you have strong data, I notice, in each filter. But when filters are lacking, uh, you get something like this. And even though uh, uh, it, it kind of looks, it doesn't look that bad. It looks gold here, cyan there, but it, it looks bland. And I know from experience, I'm going to have a hard time working with this data because I can't really pick it off. Is this green? Is it cyan? Is it something in between? And it, it's hard for me. So I mentioned before, I, I like working with uh, uh, when the, the combined turns out bright colors and I can actually see uh, a lot of green and uh, and some yellow mixed in with the green and I actually chose to work with the one on the left. Uh, a lot of people think, are you crazy? This one looks a lot close to, closer to what the uh, the wizard might look like and I'm like, well don't worry, I'll get there. <laughs> so uh, this is the one I worked with, this one. And uh, Let's see here. And uh, so this is what I worked with. And and what I did before, uh, I, I, all I did on this, I, I, this isn't the copy, but I, I, I sharpened it a little bit and I denoised it. And uh, I made the start a fraction smaller. And uh, then I sent it over to, to uh, paint or, uh, Photoshop. And in Photoshop, I just tweaked the colors a tiny bit with selective color. Let's, you can see it's the change is very minimal what I did to it in Photoshop. You can see uh, uh, maybe the green here was tinted more between a cross between cyan and green, something like that. And I tried to bring out maybe you can barely see I brought out the yellow just a, a fraction more, and maybe I, I adjusted the turn down that magenta background. And once I had this, uh, you know, very, very light changes in Photoshop, something that probably could have been done in PixInsight. And once I had that, I tried to run SCR on it. And now I'm getting closer to the kind of colors I, I want there. And from there, I went back over to Photoshop. And uh, really, uh, you know me, I, I like things to pop. And this is what I came up with. So this is my wizard nebula uh, over 20 hours this time. And uh, uh, what do you think? And let me show you uh, my previous versions. I, I'm not sure yet if I if I like the wizard this way or that way. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> so uh, I might. I might crop a little off. I, that looks a little bit bright in that corner still. So that's that's my new wizard. And this was my old wizard from last season. This is about uh, 10 hours of data. And what do you think here? Uh, let me rotate this to get a better perspective here. So what do you think? Did I, did, did I do any better? I'm sure if I had processed this I could probably have processed it a little bit better, but I think uh, I think I like the one on the right because I think the oxygen I had twice as much oxygen data as this one, and plus the fact that I was using a reducer meant I was bringing in more, uh, br bringing in more data as in terms of a faster speed. So there it is. People tend to always like my previous, or not everyone, but some people tend to like my my previous stuff as as opposed to the new stuff, but I think I did definitely did pick up a little more data here, at least in terms of oxygen. The HA was pretty strong in, in both. Uh, so, oh, and, and this one here is uh, just uh, the same data as the old one. I just tried to process it a different way. So I don't know if that was any better. I think I overdid the gold here. So I think I'm going to go with the one on the right. Well, I'm not going to go with it. It's the final copy I have, and I think I'm going to be good with the wizard for a long time to come. If I learn any new processing tricks, maybe I'll come back to it. 
So uh, uh, that's all I got to share, folks. Thanks for listening. And uh, I sorry I, I sound so bad. Uh, okay, see you later.